Let's talk about Cannon Busters. All right, so for those of you that don't know, Cannon Busters is the fantasy comic book series created by LaShawn Thomas, right? You may know him from Boondocks. He was a co-director for seasons one and two of Boondocks, and he worked on a bunch of other stuff too. Basically, he's a really talented producer, writer, comic book artist. He does it all. He's really good at what he does, but that's besides the point. Anyways, he made this series called Cannon Buster, right? Honestly speaking, never read the comic, but I did hear about an anime coming out way back in 2015, like really long time ago. That's when the, I believe the, either the trailer for the pilot came out or the pilot episode came out. But yeah, I heard about it. I saw it was being made by a black producer. I saw there was an anime and I was like, anime made by a black guy. I am hella down. I am so ready. I need this in my life, right? Anyways, four years passed, right? August 15th, an anime adaptation for Cannon Busters came out on Netflix and whoo, whoo, did it not disappoint. I am so happy. It was good. I was so worried when it came out that I was like, I was like, damn, damn son, this better not be bad. They better do my man LaShawn Thomas justice. But he was the um, leading director for the show, I believe. And um, he worked with an animation studio in Japan and it, it, the anime came out great. But my point here today is to tell you why you guys need to watch Cannon Buster and why it's so good. And to start off, I gotta tell you what Cannon Busters is about. So. Let, let's get into what Cannon Busters is about. All right, so to perfectly describe the vibe of Cannon Busters, it's kind of like Bass Dandy, Cowboy Bebop, and Trigun getting together, having some crazy threesome, and making a beautiful baby, and then LaShawn Thomas just sprinkled some black love on there just to, like, to make it even better. That's essentially what the vibe is. So it's like a Western plus space, plus some fantasy here and there, plus some litness. Essentially, it's about some outlaw named Billy the Kid who runs into an android robot thing named Sam, and and another robot named Casey, and they all team up because Sam has to find her best friend, Prince Kelby, and she kind of manhandles Philly into just kind of following her and taking her to wherever this Prince Kelby is, right? They meet other people, they fight people, they, they run into another samurai named Nine, he joins their squad, and yeah, bunch of cool shit happens. The Philly the Kid has a fucking car that transforms into a fucking bull Gundam named Bessie, and it's lit as hell. Whew, so good. So much good shit, so much good shit to talk about. But essentially the premise is four friends, Philly the Kid, Sam, Casey, and Nine, teaming up to find Prince Kelby. However, they all have their own separate motives. Philly has his own motives. He has his own reasons for finding the prince, which I will not get into because that will spoil the whole series for you. Sam, obviously she wants to reunite with her friend. Casey just being a really good friend and teaming up with Sam. And Nine is just kind of there, to be honest with you. He has his own reasons, but it's never really gone into. He just kind of joins for the beer. All right, so why is this show good? Why should you give it some of your time? Well, let's start off with the world building, all right? The series takes place in a place called Gearbolt. It's this cool mixture of Western, space, and fantasy. I feel like I said that before. That's why I made the Space Dandy reference. You, you, you guys get the point. But it's a mixture of Western, space, and fantasy, right? It's a place where technology is king, and obviously magic used to be popular before, but I guess magic is a little bit too dangerous, so they switch over to technology. The world is kind of weird in a sense where there are some places that, where you can tell the rich and the rich live, and like it, it's the place where like all the royalty is and all the nobles are. But then there are like the slums, the dangerous place, the dangerous parts of Garibald that people just don't go to unless you're a bounty hunter or Philly, because. Philly is just about that life, I guess. But the world is fire. I think Gearbolt is a really cool place. It feels realistic. Like, you know, when you're making an anime, I feel like you almost want to make the world in a way so that the, the, the viewer, the audience can imagine themselves inside the world. You know, like obviously like it's not going to be like real. Like it's not, you're not going to be thinking, hey man, I could actually live in this world and do the regular things I do normally. No, you want to kind of fall in love with this world, see how it works. When something happens in that world, you kind of understand why it happened because you understand the world building that they described before but yeah world building is in a very is a very important aspect of anime and i think they did a really good job in um cannon busters with this shit secondly all the characters are really cool like i like every single one of the characters there's probably sam annoys me the most mainly because she kind of walks up to people saying like hey you're my friend therefore you gotta help me on this mission and i'm just like sam chill like stop manhandling people like you can't just tell people what to do like stop it somebody stop this girl she's crazy 
Philly, I like the mystery behind Philly. I, they kind of went into his backstory a little bit. He, it's cool that he's immortal. Only thing I kind of wish, I wish he was a little bit stronger because he does get his ass within the show a lot. But, you know, the immortality thing is cool. His design is great. All the designs are really cool. Nine is, has a really good, cool design as well. He's a dope swordsman, samurai type guy. He kind of reminds me of Ninja Ninja from Afro Samurai mixed with the actual Afro Samurai, you know, because he kind of has the build of Ninja Ninja, but he he's more similar to Afro Samurai, if you get what if you get what I mean. Casey's just kind of there. She's super helpful. I, I don't mind her, whatever. It's cool. Prince Gelby pisses me off. I'm going to be real with you. Kind of wanted him to die in the first few episodes, but he gets better. Don't worry. Next, we have one of the most important parts of any anime, the opening. This opening is probably the best next to Yu Yu Hakusho, is probably the best anime opening I've ever heard. It's a real soulful, like, mixture of, like, jazz and hip-hop, and it's, it's just, it's just so nice. Like, honestly speaking, Netflix gives you an option to skip the intro. Never skip the intro. I watched the intro straight through the whole time. Even the ending is good. Like, honestly speaking, I usually skip, skip the ending, and then my friend told me, yo, listen to the ending one time. Listen to it. I was like, this shit is fire. Put both the songs on my phone via YouTube. It's lit. I, I love I love the intro so much. It's, it's great. You know, really nice music there, and I feel like music is also very important. And honestly, the whole OST in general is just great. The whole soundtrack for the show it's great it's beautiful if you're into chill hop if you're into hip-hop if you're into jazz if you're into all those things combined along with because there are there are some western themed songs as well like if you think about the the, the the songs you would hear in like trigun those those type that type of music is inside there as well and that's that's pretty cool as well it adds to the whole western vibe it makes you feel like you're actually in the wild wild west just with like you know gundams and magic and other other things that don't really make sense in the wild west but it makes sense in this show and that's the good part. Last pro I wanna to touch on is that the show is genuinely funny and it's just a good time. You know, it's not, it's something to like go right home about. There's no like crazy plot details. There's, it's nothing like, there is no, re you're not gonna be watching this show for the insane plot and the complex character development. It's just a fun show. It's a fun show to watch. You're gonna have a good time. It's it's funny, it, the characters are cool. The the fighting is nice. It's, it's a nice show. It's a fun show to just take a break from all the bullshit in life and just sit down and relax and watch some good anime. You know? Now for the cons, because if they do not give you cons and you guys are gonna think that I'm just sprucing this show up and there's nothing wrong with it, the cons make everything seem a little bit more real. And this show does have its cons. One of my main issues with the show was that the animations at times fell flat. Like the animations kind of got a little bit choppy. I, I got, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. I got spoiled by shows like Hunter x Hunter and Mob Psycho 100. All these shows really showed me that, hey, it's possible to have a crazy, a crazy budget for animations and use up that whole budget Budget on every single episode. However, this show is a little bit different. I don't really see it as a con, you know, because I believe this this whole show was started off a Kickstarter. Like it was started off a Kickstarter campaign from LaShawn Thomas. So I'm not expecting it to look amazing. However, I will say this, when the show wants to look good, it looks good. Sometimes it hits you with those like really cool animation rubbery scenes that you would see, st see in stuff like Soul Eater or Naruto and whatever, where like the characters don't really have any composition. They just kind of lose their outlines and like they rush through and everything gets elongated and it's super abstract and dynamic and cool. And ah, I love that shit. I love that shit so much. I don't even know what to call a type of animation, but it's just so lit. I love when animes do it. I love when they just kind of like, yo, fuck it. Just go loose, fuck perspective, fuck character builds and 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 how, and how characters how the human body's supposed to look. Just go off. Only problem is when you do a freeze frame for those scenes, it looks really bad. Like, don't get me started with like the Naruto versus Pain fight, cause that shit was, oof. Ooh, that was bad. All right, so we have the animations. You know, that's kind of a con. I wish the characters were a little bit, were a little delved into more. Like I wish their backstories, I, I wish overall, everybody just had a little bit more information on them. Cause Philly the Kid, I feel like we learned the most about. We kind of learned a little bit about Sam, but Sam shows these really strong powers, but they don't really go into it like that. They just kind of, like the bad guys mentioned like, oh my God, what the fuck is that? Somebody was like, oh, she's a cannon buster. And then they never really touched on it after that. They don't really go into Casey that much. They kind of sort of go into nine they like throw some random lore story that you would hear and like you actually hear it at a bar like it's like a campfire story like oh he's like the strongest samurai in the world he came from a league full of samurais they're all super strong and he's the last one left but then he just kind of left it at that and you're not really sure if it's true or not i mean nine is cool i just wish i knew a little bit more about him but it is what it is you know that can be solved with the second season so, LaShawn, if you watching this, Netflix, if you watching this too, make that season two, bruh, cause I, I need that.
that. I, I need I need more world building. I want to find out more about Philly and Sam and Casey and Nine and the villain Locke and the whole Gear Bolt world. I need to find out more about everything having to do with this anime because I did enjoy it. It's just little things that kind of like eh, annoyed me a little bit, you know. But yeah, honestly speaking, that's all I gotta say for Cannon Busters. I mean, like it was uh it was about twelve episodes of content on Netflix so far. It's only season one. Um, I haven't heard any news about a season two being announced. So like I said, Netflix, Sashan, make that shit happen. As I said before, it's a fun time. It's a fun story to watch. It's If you like Cowboy Bebop, you're gonna definitely love this show. If you like Trigun, you're definitely gonna love this show. If you like other works from LaShawn, like Boonocks and all that stuff, you're definitely gonna like the show. It's, it's just a really good time. I haven't heard anything bad about it yet. I don't think there's any reasons for people to say bad things about it because it's just a really good show. And for all my fellow birds out there, it's made by LaShawn Thomas, as I said before, a black producer, which is just like, yes, we're winning. Black names and anime, give me that shit. I'm so happy, that that was the main reason why, I'm not even gonna lie, I'm not even gonna lie. I thought Cannon Buster was a great show, but it was the fact that it was a black man creating an anime and it was, it, it, it just, it, it just looked really good from the pilot episode, so yeah. I had to support my brother, had to do it. It was, it, 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 it was important. It's relevant for the culture. Anyways, you should watch Cannon Buster. Let me know in the chat. If you have watched Cannon Buster, give me your opinions about the show in the comments. Or if you haven't, give it a watch. Maybe watch the first two episodes. Let me know what you think. Or let me know if you're even gonna watch Cannon Buster. There are a whole bunch of other good animes on Netflix as well. Um, if you haven't, definitely watch Kengen Ashura. I'm probably gonna do a review about that later on in the same Let's Talk thing but yeah keep the conversation going in the comments and let me know what you think about cannon busters or if you're gonna watch cannon busters at all well that is it for this episode of let's talk guys i hope you enjoyed it let me know what else you want to hear me talk about in future episodes in the comments below shout out to all my dope patrons who make videos like this possible with their very kind donations and if you are not already a patron but would like to become one go to my patreon link in the description below and find out how you can support the channel for as little as one dollar a month fam Still surprised to say that in one go because I, I usually don't speak right. The shirt giveaway is over. I'm gonna announce the winner soon, but the shirt giveaway is done. I'm, no, I'm not taking any more submissions. However, you can still get yourself a shirt if you want to. The link is in the description as well, the Gummy Mall link. Check out the shirts, I'm sure you'll like them. Purchase one, support your boy. If you can't, that's fine too. As I said before, and this is for the people that can't become patrons either, sharing, liking, commenting, subscribing if you haven't already, those all help the channel enough. I appreciate that as well. So don't feel bad if you can't give funds to the channel. It's all good, do what you can, and I'll still appreciate it. I'll still love you guys because you guys are the Donji fam and y'all are amazing. But yeah, that's about it. I plan on doing more Let's Talk episodes and stuff like the Spider-Man controversy with the MCU, uh, Rock Lee, Kengan Ashura, like I said. Uh, yeah, a bunch of other stuff. So get excited for that. If you haven't already, subscribe if you wanna watch more of this kind of quality stuff. Uh, hit the notification bell so you always get notified. And with that being said, be easy, stay lit, and take care.